bubble draft here. Just what's it like to be back in person? How does that maybe change things? Does it make things easier? Just what's it like to be back in person here? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's. Uh, I think everybody's appreciative of the opportunity to be back in person. And, uh, I know the, the young players themselves getting an opportunity to walk down the stairs now at this stage is something that you know I, I don't think they'll ever forget in their lifetime. So. I think for, for all the right reasons, you know, everybody's happy to be back. Uh, as far as you know, how we operate, uh, you know, team meetings are the same. You know, communication is probably the same. There's probably obviously opportunities to meet with uh, with players and follow up situations and uh, and situations. That, uh, you know, not that the phone doesn't, but it's always good to be able to uh, meet. Do you anticipate uh, conversations about Jake? And is that report that he had rescinded his trade request is that accurate? That's accurate. Yeah, you rescinded. Uh, as far as conversations about Jake, you know, moving forward, about playing for us or playing for another team. Either or. Is he no still? Different. It's no different than, than when you put out a, a, you know, that he would like a, a change of scenery. Um, you know, we're very happy that uh, that Jake has, has turned a corner <coughs> and uh, how he feels about the Boston Bruins and uh, and wants to be with us. He was just, he had a hell of a second part of the year and uh, deserves a lot of credit for. For the production that he put forth, and he's looking forward to being back. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, you guys know me well enough. Opportunities to improve the team, and Jake knows that as well. And that, that's what I'll have to continue to look at. Um, but we're happy that uh, he's in a good place. And I indicated that previously that I think he was uh, he was just in a better place when uh, you know when the season ended. Don, is uh, how much at the chart have been like uh, just trying to move up and down in this draft, and if you find it harder or easier to maybe potentially get into the first round? Uh, well, I mean, there's some teams that are, are you know, well positioned in the first round with multiples. So, you know, there's a lot of conversations going on. Uh, some teams are are just in, you know, pick acquisition mode, so they're not necessarily in player acquisition mode. So that's made a little harder to bury an entry in that situation. Um, and then giving up good players. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're a competitive team, it's it's hard to part with really good players, even though you're, you know, you know you'd like to get back into the first round and then improve your. Uh, your prospect pool overall. Uh, that's generally what, what uh, you know, trying to win is and being a competitive team is all about. And, uh, and we're no different than several other teams that have, you know, have given up their uh, their first round pick. Has the cap going up a bit affected anything in that regard in terms of trade talks? Uh, it hasn't, uh, hasn't gone up much. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, replacement player in the National Hockey League at any level is close to what the, the cap incrementally moved. Mm. Uh, but we've known that for, for several years as to what the, the likely trajectory of it's going to be and when it uh, it may uh, take another jump mm -hmm. uh, to loosen things up. Uh, so we're all operating under the same same set of rules. Um, but it's challenging, for sure. Do you go into tomorrow with any more clarity on your centers, number one or two? Are you asking in particular of Patrice Bergeron? Bergeron. <laughs> and, or, and or David, yeah. You get stumped on that name that you're about to ask about? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, my conversation with Patrice have gone well. His recovery's gone well. Uh, I suspect coming out of the draft and uh, heading into free agency that he'll be in a, in a real good place. I think uh, you know, we're, we're excited that uh, he's considering uh, you know, playing and moving forward with, uh, with what we think is a, is a positive uh, mindset. No. Definitive word well, for him. Yet. For him, you know, for him to uh, to declare when he's ready to do that. Uh, you know, and, but as I said, he's checking off a lot of boxes that, uh, that have given us strong indications. But until Patrice decides to uh, to make that public, then that's his his to, uh, to hold on to. You've been asked about uh, Krejci a little bit in recent weeks. Is that something you're actively pursuing right now? I've been in touch with David and his, and, uh, and Yuri uh, that he's working with. Um, again, spent a lot of time with his family and deciding what he would like to do. Uh, but the conversations have gone well. It's just a matter of when David decides uh, ultimately and if, if, uh, if we're going to be the place that he chooses. Any, uh, as far as uh, the injured guys, uh, Marsh and you know, McAvoy, any, Chris, like any kind of updates on their timeline when they might start skating or getting back to? Yeah, I mean, Marsh and, and, uh, and Charlie, uh, you know, probably a little longer. Uh, Timeline, it's all, you know, not what it indicated. I think they're on, that they're doing well in their recovery, um, but they were put in a six month general time frame. So, you know, from a skating standpoint, we won't know that for, for a while now. Uh, Grizzlick's done very well. His was a little bit shorter, more in a five month timeline, um, doing well. Bradley had a clean up of his ankle. He's going to be fine for camp. Uh, and, you know, as I even said, Bergie's recovery is, uh, is going well. So, you know. You know, it's disappointing that you're going to start the year without a couple of those guys. Obviously, key pieces to our group, but it's an opportunity for somebody else. And uh, um, 
and we'll see how that goes. Any other procedures that we don't know about? Nope, that's it so far. Speaking of those opportunities, who are some guys maybe in the last year that you saw are maybe ready to make the leap that you think are kind of approaching that point? From Providence yeah. itself? Or yeah, overall? whether it be forwards or D in Providence. Um, you know, well, we had several players, obviously, that came up and played. Um, you know, Yona Kopanen finished the year really well. Um, he was contemplating going back and uh, wanted to know what his opportunity and what it might look like. So there's a player that, uh, you know, decided to return, felt that he was close to uh, potentially pushing for an NHL spot. Obviously, you know, we're eagerly anticipating now Jack comes back uh, in this summer and what the opportunity looks like there. You know, so I think overall we've, we've got guys, and then you've got younger players that, as I said before, I'm on record, you know, we're not forcing, you know, Lysels and Beechers and Lavacos, you know, but we have a lot of guys there that can move with their ears pinned back and see if they can take a, take a spot. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about that uh, and the opportunity that I think, you know, with the injuries are certainly going to present themselves. Any uh, higher profile uh, kids won't make the development camp, like we've heard maybe Lorai might have an injury that he's working through. Yeah, Mason's uh, recovering from uh, a knee procedure, so he won't be on the ice. He'll be at development camp, but he won't be on the ice. He's taking a slow progression there and making sure that the rehab goes exactly as planned. Uh, you know, we've talked to Fabian uh, Lysel. Uh, you know, he's going to the World Juniors in, uh, in August, so that may be too much on his plate um, to think about making multiple trips. So that one, in all likelihood, he won't participate which means he would take the World Juniors and lead right into uh, time with us and then uh, rookie camp and such, which, you know, is an extensive period of time. So going back and forth may, may not be beneficial for him. Maybe still a conversation to have, see how the fall goes, but is he ticketed for Vancouver if he doesn't make the roster or could he go to Providence or? Oh, no, he'll determine where he plays next year. Um, Boston, Providence or, or Vancouver. Uh, you know, we think he's certainly talented enough to play in any one of those three places. He's proven he's, he can put up uh, big numbers in the WHL and see physically he can handle the next steps, be it in Boston or in, in Providence. So we're excited about what uh, his progression will, will dictate. How's the first week been with Jim? Been good. Uh, Communication-wise, you know, two, three times a day. He's in Boston now with his family, doing all the house searching and school stuff. So he's got some things on his plate. But uh, talking to a lot of players, interviewing some coaches as well for the uh, open uh, vacancy uh, uh, in the back end with Kevin Dean party, and um, he's had a good conversation with both Joe and uh, Chris Kelly and Bob Asenza. So they're sort of you know communicating as I would hope and making some decisions about uh, our staff moving forward. We're going to add at least uh, one person as well as uh, replacing Kim, and that may be a multiple person situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, been really been in touch with Monty you know, multiple times a day, going over you know different rosters and just fine tuning some of the things we had discussed obviously through the interview process and. Uh, and what our, what our lineup's going to look like. What, what struck you most maybe in talking to him in interviews or just, you know, even before that, from what you saw from afar about his philosophies? I, I mean, I certainly have a history with Monty going way back, um, you know, what his team's played like. Uh, he's got a winning history. Uh, I think diving into how his time was spent in St. Louis uh, was really productive as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, working with Chief and Otter and, uh, and Doug Armstrong, um, being able to talk to that, that group and how he integrated there. Did the penalty killing this year, which you know took a nice jump for them. Obviously, it spent a lot of time with Otter, and he's got a power play mindset anyway. And, and, and Steve did a really good job in, in St. Louis with their power play; it was excellent. Um, mm -hmm. Incorporating some of those things as well um, with our group. Um, we talked a lot about the transition game. That I, I think St. Louis did an excellent job this year. Um, you know what our our group is it's comprised, it's capable of doing, and. Uh, Probably pushing things a little more offensively in some areas if we're capable, first and foremost, and what the personnel looks like. And uh, maintaining defensive structure is something that Monty believes in, I believe in. Um, our team has been really good in that, that area. Uh, he's fine, you know, excited about the goaltending situation that we have in tandem there and not worrying about, you know, stretching a guy a number of starts and just letting the competitive nature of the two players uh, play that out. Um, talent on the power play stuff he's excited about. Mm -hmm. um, Primarily the same philosophy of, of, you know, if you're in your lineup, you should be on one one of the specialty teams um, in some way, be it first or second, or certainly in the PK side of things. And, and we've done that, so there's an alignment there. Um, and then where the younger players are and who can push, you know, just, just signing. And then also looking at what we're capable of doing free agency-wise, it's, you know, we're, unlike a lot of teams, you know, we'll have a lot of cap room to go deep sea fishing. but. Uh, you know, finding some depth players and people that fit his eye and the way he'd like to play. Um, you know, been really, you know, sort of organic conversations that, that 
came from the whole interview process and, and really I've continued on a daily basis and multiple times a day. Beyond the hockey, he's seen as somebody who's getting a second chance to coach in the NHL. You know, beyond hockey, personality-wise, getting to know him, why do you think that fits with him, that second chance? Well, I mean, he's a driven person to succeed hockey-wise. He's got a great mind for the game. Um, you know, sees the game really from the bench really well, makes adjustments. Um, we talked a lot about those things, you know, when he first went to Dallas, talked to people that worked with him in Dallas and, and how he continued to evolve. And obviously he, uh, you know, Monty's been right out in front. He tripped himself up and uh, and the recovery process since then is, has, has been great. It's a good story at this point in time. It's a lifelong pursuit for him. And uh, he's got a support system in place, starts with his family and Emily. and. Uh, and the people that he surrounded himself with, and we're going to help in, in that area as well. And uh, you know, you talk about second chances; you've got to earn those. You know, and hopefully he's put himself in a position to take advantage of uh, you know life-changing events for him. Um, as a hockey coach, he's excited about the opportunity and, uh, and grateful for the opportunity, for that matter. And uh, um, but the hockey conversations were were, were most important to us. And, uh, and we feel strongly that uh, he's able to tap in, connect with players, uh, and, uh, and hopefully get the best out of him. Last one here. Um, you, uh, you've seen Mike Greer as a player. Um, I'm sure you, you know, remember him at BU and, and all that coming through. And, and now that he's part of your fraternity, you know, what is your reaction to him and, and how you think he's going to do in that role? I'm glad uh, I'm not riding next to the Airdyne and Mike Greer any longer. <laughs> San Jose players ride next to him. They're, they're going to realize that he, he, he'll overpower that machine. He's a great, <laughs> great human being, first and foremost. He's, um, uh, you know, a real soft-spoken guy, but, but played the game hard, was smart, cerebral. Um, you know, it's got an, it's such an interesting family dynamic that he's able to tap into that none of us, you know, certainly can, uh, can, can utilize. Um, but I'm really, really proud of, uh, of the decision San Jose's made and Mike getting the opportunity. I think it, it speaks volumes for where the game is going and growing, and uh, I think it'll do a good job. Good. Thanks. Thanks, 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 Thanks. 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 Than